Hello everyone. I just ate some broccoli. Make sure it's not in my teeth. How are you? I am excited to be live uh, with all of you today. And so thank you so much for joining me. For those of you that are new, I am Amy of amyraup.com and I am a fertility detective. That's, that's a title I love to use. I am a best-selling author in the space of women's health and fertility. I actually, I wrote, this is my most recent book, The Egg Quality Diet. My other books are kind of right there behind me. Yes, You Can Get Pregnant, Body Belief. My first book, Chill Out and Get Healthy. I've been in clinical practice as an acupuncturist and herbalist for 20 years. And during that time, I've helped thousands of women on their path to motherhood. Um, I also am, I have degrees in biology and chemistry. I've been studying functional medicine. I work with an herbal mentor. Um, I'm always learning and growing and sharing that information with all of you. And so I thank you for trusting me on your path to motherhood because I know the journey is flipping stressful and overwhelming and it's hard to find I think quality support and it's hard to know I think who to trust right and so as a clinician being out there in the field for 20 years and you know literally at the height of my practice I was seeing 60 patients a week now most of my work is done virtually and I go into my clinics only um I go in twice a month now, but uh, you know, now I have a very big coaching practice where I support women all over the world. And I have a team of coaches now, and that's what we're doing. And it's amazing to reach all of you wherever you are in the world. And it's an honor. And I would say that I've probably seen every possible fertility case out there. And so today's topic, what I wanted to talk about, and we emailed my list. If you guys aren't on my email list, you should get on there. Um, I give a lot of freebies and really juicy information on my email list. Um, just head to my website and take the quiz if you want. If you haven't taken my fertility quiz, that's a good place to start. We just revamped the quiz. Um, just go to amyrop.com. You'll see the quiz at the top banner. And then that'll get you into my email list. And then you won't miss information for things like this. Um, and like I said too, um, we've just revamped my funnel. And you know the funnels are the email list, emails that you get once you join the list. And there's so much juicy content in there for all of you. So if you haven't done that, please uh, take an opportunity or take a moment to do that. But um, today, what I promised all of you we were gonna talk about is the conversation of does my fertility need a reboot or do I need a detox to support my fertility? Like what is a fertility reboot? What is a fertility detox? And so I wanted to first discuss with you what I look for when I know someone needs a fertility reboot. So generally speaking, right, you guys are trying to get pregnant, you're having a harder time, um, you go to your doctor, they'll look maybe at your age, they'll look at your FSH or AMH, maybe they'll, maybe they'll do um, a sonogram and, and look at your ovaries or your antral follicle count. And maybe they'll tell you unexplained fertility challenges or that you have a thyroid disorder or um, there's sperm issues, right? Or you suspect maybe you have endometriosis or you've been told you have endo or PCOS. Um, but you're kind of still just sent on your way, right? Like these are your options. You could do fertility treatments. You can continue trying. You could try this. You could try that. It's very um, standard protocol, right? No one's really digging deeper. No one's looking at health as an overall umbrella to your fertility. And that's really my work. That's that's how I work. And, and something I've been saying for over a decade is your fertility is an extension of your health. They are not separate. And unfortunately, Western medicine still hasn't really caught up to that. There are some really good doctors out there, of course, that have caught on, but I would still say mainstream medical system doesn't see fertility and health as being intertwined, which I find fascinating because if your body is dealing with a chronic inflammation or a chronic infection or a low-lying infection um, or chronic stress or autoimmune condition, an inflammatory condition, it will not prioritize fertility. It'll say, I have this to, I have this to manage. I, I can't manage that at the same time. I, I gotta prioritize this. And so I think the, the, the secret sauce to what I do and my team does, and if you guys have read my books, you know all about this, but I think it's still nice to hear it from me um, in my layman's terms. But my secret sauce is that I'm looking at health 
and I'm looking at your skin and I'm looking at your poop and I'm looking at your sleep and I'm looking at your digestion and I'm saying, okay, these things, these are your kinks in your system or your red flags as we call them. And we need to fix those and then fertility should start to improve, right? I want to read to you a, sec, um, a piece from the Egg Quality Diet on this topic. Have you tried everything to get pregnant and nothing seems to work? Has your doctor told you the eggs in your ovaries are all bad? Or that donor egg is the only option for you having a baby? And I'm not against donor by any means. A little side note there. Um, have you done multiple rounds of fertility treatments with no baby to show for it? Are you worried you're too old to have a baby? Have you spent half your paycheck on antioxidant vitamins and fertility smoothie ingredients and still have no idea how or why they can help you get pregnant? Do you feel overwhelmed by all of the information out there on improving your fertility? And so I think that's many of you, right? And, and I, I see it too. When, when women come to us, um, they are on you know, upwards of 20 different supplements. They're taking all sorts of green drinks and juices and they're doing a fertility detox and they just did something else. And, um, and it's like they're just basically throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks rather than really figuring out and identifying what works for their body and their health and what doesn't. But the first way to know what works for your body is you have to identify, you know, kind of what I would say is whether or not your body needs a reboot. Like, are there things going on and your body speaking to you saying, this isn't working for me. I need help in this department. So... In this book, um, The Egg Quality Diet, I really get into, um, you know, my doctor told me there's no hope with my own eggs. And I say, I hear this, um, but as far as we know, yeah, there's a question around that we still, we actually are still creating more eggs even as we age. And that's kind of an interesting, I'm in the research right now looking at it and I will come out with a post soon on the data. But, um, Basic general translation is the older you are, the less healthy the cells that make up the eggs in your ovaries and hence the less likely they are to make chromosomally normal babies. This theory is plausible. However, there are three big issues with this idea. It doesn't account for epigenetics, which epigenetics is a study of how certain environmental factors like your lifestyle choices impact whether genes in your body turn on or turn off. It goes against other scientific notions that we can heal from disease that we can slow down the aging process, that we can prevent or delay the age-related um, diseases, the onset of them. Um, and it doesn't address how coexisting health challenges like autoimmunity and inflammation are impacting your fertility. And that's really for me. Like when someone comes to me and I'm gonna read you some of, so I, I got into the, in the book, I talk about how inf inflammation impacts your health and your fertility. I talk a little bit about genetics um, but then uh, in this book on page 21, and you'll see it goes from page 21 all the way through to 23, I have a list of kinks, of symptoms. And so for me, this is what I say, take a few minutes, look through the list of signs and symptoms and check off anything you're currently experiencing on a regular basis, meaning one or more times a week. If you only experience one of these, okay, so be honest, really reflect, blah, blah, blah. Um, but what I want to, what I usually say is if there's like four or five of these red flag symptoms, your body is saying to you, I have other priorities. I need to heal and then I can prioritize my hormones and then I can prioritize my fertility. And I think this is a very basic way of looking at it and not everybody appreciates the basicness of it. People really want like, you know, I have this, how do I fix that? Or I just want to get pregnant. I don't really care that I have eczema all over my body. Well, I care that you have eczema all over your body because it's telling me your body is dealing with an immune and or a systemic inflammatory situation. It also tells me from a Chinese medicine perspective, you're not absorbing your nutrition. You're, you're really, your skin is hot. You're hot, you're inflamed. And that is not lending itself to good egg quality and or balanced hormones, right? If someone says to me, but I don't care that I only poop once every four days. I give a shit, literally, um, pun intended, because that's also telling me you're not absorbing your nutrition. Something's not working. Your body is not doing well with something you're consuming on a regular basis. Oh, um, I get migraines and they're debilitating or I spot, you know, from cycle day 14 through 21.
21. Okay, those are all signs to me like, no bueno, no bueno. Uh, my body aches. I have brain fog. Um, I have no energy to get through the day. I need naps or I crash at like three o'clock. Um, huge red flags for me. Uh, I already touched on some of these. Let's see, cold hands and feet constipation, um, diarrhea, difficulty concentrating, dizziness, dry skin, dry hair, dry nails, brittle nails, um, feeling groggy, floaters, gas. Um, now, some of these things once in a while, totally fine and normal, but these things on a consistent daily basis are telling me your body needs a fertility reboot. Really intense PMS, irritability, itchy ears, that's a big one. Um, multiple miscarriages without a live birth in between. A huge red flag that there is something else going on beyond egg quality. I know doctors love to blame your egg quality on that. Regardless of your age, they will all tell you it's bad luck and your eggs are just bad. So sorry. No, it is an immune response. You have an immune reaction going on to pregnancy and you need to see a reproductive immunologist and you need to do a fertility reboot and reset the immune system. You need to heal your gut. And so, so much of what we see now in the current research is the microbiome, the, the vaginal uterine microbiome and the gut microbiome are directly impacting fertility. And if we're not getting to the root of that, it's going to be hard to optimize egg quality. It's going to be hard to have better fertility outcomes. It's going to be hard to get and stay pregnant. Rosacea is another big one. Psoriasis is another big one. Nasal congestion, muscle stiffness, um, sweating easily. So anyway, there's a ton of these. I think there's over a hundred thyroid issues, low vitamin D. Um, you know, these are things that like I dig into with my patients. And so when, when patients first come to us, this is what we do. I spend an hour with them, um, diving into their health parameters. How's your sleep? Do you wake up feeling rested? Do you wake up in the middle of the night to pee? Are you dreaming a lot? Are you sweating? Are you cold? How's your poop? How often are you pooping? Is it formed? Is it easy to pass? Do you get gas? Do you get reflux? Um, how's your skin? Do you have eczema, psoriasis, rosacea? Uh, do you have like a histamine reaction to certain foods? Do you get hives? Those are all really huge red flags to me. Has your thyroid been checked? I know you went and saw a fertility doctor. Did they check your thyroid? Did they do a complete thyroid panel? Did they do a complete iron panel? What's your vitamin D status, right? We dig into every possible piece. I mean, I just had a girl right now. She's had four failed transfers. She's 34 years old. She makes perfectly normal embryos. She's had one miscarriage. She wound up going to IVF because they were not getting pregnant. Or she's had miscarriages. IVF beautiful embryos. Guess what? Four transfers. Nothing's working. Comes to us and she's like, what the hell? Like I'm, I'm young. I'm making good embryos. Like her last retrieval, they, they retrieved like 23 eggs and 12 made PGT normal embryos. So there's nothing wrong with her egg quality. Something's going on in her uterine environment. Then she comes to us and what are some of her big red flags? Um, well, she has Hashimoto's. We discovered that she has Hashimoto's. We, um, let me just get to her red flags. I want to just read them to you. Acne, low libido, fatigue, brain fog, headaches, eczema. Um, and she, let's see. At this point, she did um, IUIs, multiple retrievals, multiple transfers, no pregnancies. Um, endometriosis, irregular periods. Um, she moved to, uh, IVF right away because her periods were irregular. So anyway, eventually what we did was we got her to the right doctors. We got the right tests. We got the right support for her, changed her diet, changed her supplements, worked on those red flag symptoms. And, um, you know, she's currently now pretty pregnant and it's amazing. I mean, this is just one case that literally um, just happened this week where we're hearing about the pregnancy, right? So what we do is we dive in and we're looking at every single piece of your health and then saying, okay, these are the right supplements for you. In some cases, we're looking at hormones with different testing. We're looking at gut health with different testing. We're looking at vaginal microbiome with different testing. 
and then we're catering and we're seeing things shift and then we see fertility shift as an extension of overall health, right? So to just blanket say, cause you're X age or you have X diagnosis that this is your only option. You need to do IVF or you need to go to egg donor or you, you cannot do this naturally is, um, it's reckless. I think it's unethical. And I think that the medical system is failing us. They are not doing their job. They are not digging deeper. It's, I think it's fascinating that, that I have a job, that that's what I do, and then just basically get them to get the right test, to get the right support. Obviously, we're tweaking diet. Obviously, we're tweaking supplements. We're working on mindset. We're working on creating a sense of safety and nourishment in the body. But all of that then starts to translate to improved hormones, improved egg and sperm quality of course we work on sperm quality when we're working with our clients if they're in a heterosexual couple um and we're we're working on all the pieces of the puzzle but we constantly go back and check on these red flag symptoms and we want to see them improve and as we see them improve yeah maybe we're still getting our period maybe we're not getting pregnant but we're seeing things shift and trend in the direction of improved fertility outcomes so how do you know if you need a fertility reboot? Do you guys have any questions for me? Ask me some questions. And I have um, some some exciting news to share with you around a fertility reboot. But um, this is not, as someone's asking you to join me live, I'm not doing a fertility hot seat. That'll actually happen on t- Tuesday next week. I'll do a fertility hot seat. And whoever gets picked for the fertility hot seat next week is going to get something for free from me because we are going to be giving um, some stuff away. So what is a fertility reboot? So um, great question, Kristen. Um, So the way I see it uh, in in the egg quality diet, like we do it as a hundred day protocol, right? But what I would say is a fertility reboot is I think you could consider it like I don't love the word detox, but I think you could consider it a detox to heal the gut reduce inflammation, improve digestion and absorption, regulate the nervous system, give the body everything it needs to heal and thrive. And that is going to reboot your health, which fertility is an extension of health, right? So following the 100-day plan as mapped out in the egg quality diet, I think is, is you know, personally, I wrote the book. Of course, I think it's great, but um, I've been using this protocol clinically for over a decade and then decided to write a book last year and, and publish it because I thought I should just share this with everybody else because it's not fair that you have to pay to work with me to get this information. Let's just put it in a book that's $17 and, and you can do it yourself. Um, but the fertility reboot, so I am hosting a fertility reboot. Uh, we do it typically twice a year. We haven't done one since the fall of 2022, but kicking off on June 1st is my 30 day fertility reboot. Um, you guys can get on the wait list. The, the enrollment is going to open next week. If you go to amyrop.com slash reboot wait list. So R E B O O T wait list. I'm going to put it here and pin it. Um, then you can get on the wait list. So what I'm going to do in this fertility reboot is guide you, support you, give you um, shopping list, meal plans, uh, recipes. You're going to get weekly group coaching from me in our private community. You're also going to get weekly food nutrition coaching from one of my coaches in our private community. And um, it's 30 days. It's basically the first 30 days of this book. And then we kind of wrap up at the end of June. The first 30 days are the hardest, which is why I choose the first 30 days to guide you and support you. And I mean, you just get incredible resources and support for those 30 days and a great community of others who are also um, dealing with similar issues, trying to conceive, struggling with health challenges, wanting to optimize their health and their fertility. I mean, I just got... Um, a a DM and Instagram that a woman and she's in her mid 40s her FSH was I think a 60 doctors were like no bueno sorry we can't work with you you're you're out she followed this protocol 100 day protocol her FSH is now an eight her antral follicle count went up her AMH improved um, and she's back in the game she's back in the game so um, let's see I just see some questions going on um Let's see, I have done a quality diet. Should I go back to phase two? I mean, I only recommend going back to phase two if you really feel like you need that like that 11 day reset. 
Um, a lot of patients that have worked with me and then they veered off the diet, I usually push them back into phase three and just say, this is where we'll start. But myself personally, sometimes I really like to do just at least four days of phase two. It's kind of like a good mental reset for me. And then I go into my early, my phase three um, and, and go there. How can you get an appointment with me? Um, just email my team, info at amyrop.com. But currently, just an FYI, the only way to work with me is through my functional fertility group coaching program, um, which is a six month intensive. You can find out more about that at amyrop.com slash FFP. Um, otherwise, my coaches are available and I also have clinicians in my offices to treat, um, but currently do not, I do not take any new patients um, unless they're in the program. Um, after you, but my coaches are fucking phenomenal and they're brilliant. And so you're in good hands, even if you work with one of my coaches. After a year on pro and prebiotics, recommended by my nutritionist, I see great results. Skin issues gone, inflammation reduced. Do you recommend staying on these supplements or get um, get it through food? I think a good combination of both, but I do think it's smart to um, change up probiotics, right, and to know what your body needs, and and maybe you do, you know, some gut health assessments to see. But if you're feeling great, I mean, what you're doing is working too. So perhaps you could slowly cut back a little on the probiotic and prebiotic and then get it more through food, but still keep it in the mix, maybe, you know, half the week. Um, do you recommend food sensitivity tests? I do not. And I did a ton of research around this when I wrote my book, Body Belief. Um, they kind of are a snapshot in time and they don't tell us a lot. And if you're in a very inflamed state, you're going to seem reactive to so many foods. The only surefire way to know the right diet for yourself is to do an elimination diet, which is exactly what this is. It's an elimination diet, which is not easy. It's the long road, um, but it is beyond rewarding people. Like I had one girl that was like, I've done everything. I've tried every single thing. I've seen functional doctors, holistic doctors, nutritionists, you know, regular MDs for her skin, for, for her stubborn eczema. The only thing that got rid of her eczema was this diet. And now we know exactly the foods that trigger her. It's like bell peppers and uh, lentils or something like that. Um, what would be a reason for miscarriage after doing the yes, you can get pregnant diet? Um, I mean, there's a whole host of reasons. Uh, I would do a clotting factor panel and um, you might need to not do yes, you can get pregnant. You might need to go more aggressive and do this diet, which eventually like winds you up at the yes, you can get pregnant diet. But this is the elimination diet. But there's so here's the thing. Miscarriages suck. And I'm sorry that you went through it. I've had one. I know how much they suck. Um one, they're, they're common. 20% of pregnancies end in miscarriage. Multiple miscarriages without a live birth in between is a different story. There's an immune or inflammatory reaction going on. So sometimes you just need longer on the protocol. Sometimes you need to do um, deeper digging with a blood clotting uh, panel, clotting factor panel. Um, amyrop.com slash miscarriage. I have the complete clotting factor panel there. You can go and get it. So it just really depends and, um, you know, but I would keep looking and, you know, stay on the protocol and maybe continue to tweak things. Um, how does one go about testing the vaginal microbiome? So there's, there's the EVI test, which is actually on my desk. I have to do it is a really cool test. Um, E V V Y. Um, but also for many women, I, re I strongly recommend an endometrial biopsy to test for endometritis, not endometriosis, endometritis. And that will tell us if there's um, a uterine uh, imbalance or infection that is impacting implantation. Um, okay, so is this still effective in the case of hydrosalpinx or do you recommend surgery first? Um, I do think that you can really improve like the overall inflammatory environment in your body and manage side effects from hydrosalpinx. Some of my patients don't need the surgery, some do. Um, it kind of just depends on if there is a, a blockage or not in the tube. I know what hydrocelpings are and I know it leaks in, but some patients need to go and get it treated and some don't. Um, but I still would tell you that the hydrocelpings to me is a sign of like a low lying infection, low lying inflammation. And so something like this would definitely be the approach I would take. Um, how much does the reboot cost? It's $150, which I think is really reasonable for a four week, 30 day course. 
Um, we give you so much. We're supplying you with the meal plans, the recipes, the shopping list, all the things. We we do require that you have your own copy of Egg Quality Diet. It just makes it a hell of a lot easier for everyone to go through. Um, so 150 plus the cost of the Egg Quality Diet. But it's 30 days. You get an incredible community. You're going to get so much support. Um, is the reboot good to do during or after a miscarriage? Um, I would, yeah. I'm sorry um, that you've miscarried. Is a diet suitable for vegans? It is not. Um, there are vegetarian options that I present and you don't have to go heavy. You don't even have to eat meat if you don't want to, but I do think that consuming eggs and bone broth are an extremely important piece to the puzzle. Um, in my clinical experience, I have not seen vegans that are struggling with trying to conceive have an easy time. They're typically missing choline. They're typically missing enough good quality fats, enough good quality protein, B vitamins. There are some ways to do it and we always work with our patients and we meet them where they're at. But um, it's my diet is definitely more, you know, carnivorous, if you will. But, you know, it's something to also challenge yourself. I at one point was a vegetarian. Like this is just a question that I always pose to my um my clients is like, if what you're doing isn't working, are you willing to look and try other things? I respect veganism. I respect vegetarianism. Like I said, I was one. And we do have women that for religious reasons cannot consume meat. And we really find ways to work with them. So it's it's workable. Um, five blighted ovums. So that's crap right there. There's something else going on there. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's some kind of autoimmune or inflammatory response. That that's not normal, you know, and I, I send you love that sucks. That's hard. But that there's something else going on there. There's something else going on with um, the the I think an inflammatory response and the creation of that egg. Um, start an IVF cycle. What are the essential foods for this time? Lots of fat, 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 upwards of 40 to 50 percent fat in your diet. Good quality protein. Do not go more than three hours without protein. Um, have fat, start your day off with at least 30 grams of protein. Um, where can I start if I've had three miscarriages with no answers from our current loss panel? Um, so yeah, I would definitely do the egg quality diet. Um, I would look at autoimmune testing, um, not just the, the pregnancy panel. So I would look at things like Hashimoto's, you know, um, look at your ANAs, look at vitamin D levels, um, any inflammatory markers, homocysteine, CRP, get yourself to a reproductive immunologist. There's some great ones. Dr. Vidali is one of my favorites. Um, he's got a test called the Pregmune, which looks at so much more than just um, uh, clotting factors. It's P-R-E-G-M-U-N-E. -E. Yeah, I think that you can follow them here on uh, social as well. Um, it's a good place to start. Dr. Kwak Kim is another great immunologist. Dr. Drabala, another great one. Um, how do I boost ferritin? My iron looks fine. Um, does ferritin be in low impact fertility? It can. So I'll come at it with, um, you know, I usually do nettles and, uh, blackstrap molasses, um, Chinese herbs, but it's an absorption thing too. So I'm really going to look at your diet and your gut health. And so you really want to work on healing that gut. Um, closed fallopian tubes due to endometriosis, do diet massages or castor oil help or surgery? Um, they can help for sure. I've seen people do the clear passage, um, Mayan massage, Chinese herbs, acupuncture, things like that. Castor oil packs can all definitely help. And then in some cases we need surgery. It just depends. I would also do an anti-inflammatory diet like the one I have mapped out here. Um, how do you feel about protein powder? I know you recommend vital proteins. Just trying to up my protein game. Yeah, I use, I like, the, I love, um, what is it, Dr. Axe brand, what is it, Ancestral, his bone broth protein powder, I use that, and I also use Vital Proteins. I think, I agree, like I'm trying, I, same thing, I try to get upwards of 100 grams of protein a day, and it's hard to do without supplementing with some powders. Um, can you recommend some brands for supplements? Um, all my supplement brands are on my website, uh, amyropp.com slash fertility supplement. So they're all there, and you can go check it out. Um, so anyway, that's the announcement. If you guys want to join this fertility reboot that we are offering this year, it'll probably be the only time we do it this year. Um, go to amyrop.com slash reboot waitlist. I pinned the 
the link right here. Get on the wait list. Enrollment is going to open on Monday. And it's our 30-day fertility reboot. You can read all about it at amyraup.com slash fertility reboot. I'm pretty positive. Um, and you can read all about the program and what comes with it. And then you'll see there's a bottom, there's a button at the bottom that says get on the wait list. So there's a video, there's information of all the things you're going to get. Um, my favorite part about the reboot is we're not just going to dive into diet stuff. We really dive into rewiring the brain and your thoughts. So every week, my group coaching is all around the emotions. So every day and you're in the reboot, you get an email from me. And there's a food focus and a feelings focus. And so when I do the group coaching, I'm really focused on the feelings part. And then my teammate, Carrie, is going to do the food uh, Q&As every week too. So you're going to get tremendous support to really understand not just the right diet for you, but how to shift your mindset and how to get out of the loop. And then also we really start with like tuning into our thoughts and then noticing our thoughts and then beginning to shift our thoughts and how can we say that better? How can we be more supportive to ourselves? And plus you get an incredible community. So if it sounds interesting to you, um, go check it out, get on the wait list. And like I said, enrollment is going to open on Monday. And then next week on Tuesday, whoever is chosen for my fertility hot seat will get free enrollment to the fertility reboot. So mark your calendars. I will be live on Tuesday, um, May 23rd at, hmm. Oh, no, that's a lie. Monday, May 22nd. I'm looking at the wrong calendar day. At 2 p.m., I will be live for my fertility hot seat. And whoever I choose is going to get free enrollment to the reboot. And if you guys um, are in my Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course, you get a very special discount. If you are in my FFP program, you get it for free. So keep that in mind. And we will be emailing you all those special discounts. So you don't have to ask us. You're going to see it in the inbox. And I'll also post it in our private communities. So, but thank you, guys. Have a beautiful day. And also, if you don't want to join the reboot, but you want the information, um, this is the book. And it is, uh, I think, $17. And it's filled with 100 days of meal plans, recipes, shopping lists. So much information. Have a great day.